Greetings and salutations. John Lee here. Thanks for sharing your time watching this video. And please remember to like, share, and comment below. It really helps. Now, imagine that your life is not your own. You have no rights, no property, and you are bound to someone who controls you completely. If you don't obey their orders, they can hit you, beat you, even take your life and no one would really bat an eye. Now, am I speaking of some poor slave owned by an evil master? Well, in a way, I'm speaking about the historical treatment of the average female. When our Constitution was written, it was silent on women. Our founding fathers, yeah, they were only fathers founding, because the mothers were too busy taking care of the home, the kids, and possibly everything else, that they were too busy to found anything. And yes, I know the men were busy fighting for the country's freedom. The point I'm trying to make is about the mindset at the time. Women were, at the time, thought of as property, similar to the slaves that were owned. That's also a topic for another time. Women had no God-given rights at all, just like the slaves. The only real difference was that they were the same shade as their owners so they were offered a modicum of better treatment. Now, they were excluded from most of the rights and privileges of citizenship. Women operated in limited and, and rigid roles, while enslaved women were excluded from all. Eventually, women got tired of being second-class citizens and decided to do something about it. Thus began the first phase of the women's rights movement in the 19th and early 20th century. Women like Harriet Tubman and Harriet Beecher Stowe fought for women's rights. And I find it interesting that both these enlightened women fought to abolish slavery as well as fighting for the rights of women. The reason I bring these things up is to point out that until relatively recently, women have also been kept down by men. Race didn't matter. Just being born female was reason enough to be used and abused. Now, imagine being a mother, experiencing this. Is it so strange to imagine them warning their daughters about the evils of men? Now imagine that she grows up and becomes a mother, whether she wants to or not. Do you think that she will pass this, that, this dissatisfaction along to her daughter or niece? Eventually, as the 20th century opened up and women were rewarded I say rewarded, not given, because they had to fight for what freedom they finally got. Little girls grew up, and now they have more opportunities. But in the back of their minds, they hear the words of their mother or grandmother. Don't marry a man because you think you need to. Always have an escape plan. You can marry a man, dear, but never trust them. They will always hurt you. Now, I don't suggest that these thoughts and suggestions are right, but I can understand them. And, as much as I hate to say it, even today, men are still treating women in a way less than what they deserve. Are there any good men out there? Of course there are. Which is the point I'm coming to, albeit in a roundabout way. I mentioned the women's rights movement earlier because I believe it was necessary at the time. And while it is still needed now, I think that the real message has been twisted and distorted. Is it right for a woman to be valued for who she is? Absolutely. But these days, a lot of women have raised their perceived value to new heights of idiocy. Now imagine being a man asking a woman out on a date and finding out that in order to do so, you are expected to spend upwards of $300 or more on a first date. And what would you think when you found out she expected you to have a six-figure income before she will grace you with her presence? There is a strong movement today among some women that they feel they deserve these high-value men. Now, I can understand the need for having money. Everything is more expensive today, and so many times both people have to work in a relationship or in a family just to get the things that we were able to get when just the man went out and worked alone. 
and I understand that women are no longer comfortable with their traditional role in a household. If they do stay at home and cook and clean and take care of everything, so many men are still unwilling to pitch in and lend a hand. So now, women want the resources available to hire a maid or a housekeeper to help them with the work. But ladies, stop and think for a moment. If you're looking for a man that makes the kind of money you feel you need to live on, you probably have to look for an older, established man who has had the time to work their way into that tax bracket. And you can bet that most of these men are either already spoken for, probably by a woman who stood by them on the way up, or they're not really interested in getting married, or they would have by now. Younger men are struggling with paying back student loans or building their business or learning a trade. Most barely have enough to take care of themselves, let alone treat you in a style you'd like to become accustomed to. And now, because of the demands of such women, men are looking elsewhere for companionship. If you've ever heard the term passport bros, it's used to describe the men who are looking to women in other countries for companionship looking for women that still believe in the traditional roles of women to be helpmeets and companions to their men. So here we are, with the new battle of the sexes. Women are holding themselves to a higher and possibly unrealistic standard. And men are thinking more about themselves and not getting married to, and wanting to live their own lives, or going elsewhere to get married, or to find companionship. I suppose the real point of all this is an apology. An apology to the hard-working man who is just looking for companionship, who respects women and wants to love and support one for the rest of his life. And to the woman, working hard, who wants to become a wife and mother and find a man to love and support. And I am deathly afraid that sometime in the not too far future, in some museum, you might find them standing next to the woolly mammoth and the Neanderthal man because they died out and became extinct. And if they do, I weep for the future. Thanks again for stopping by and listening. I'm not claiming to have any answers. I'm just trying to get you to think for a moment so you can find your own. Comments are welcome below and be sure to subscribe if you wish to catch more of my videos. Be well and try to be as good to others as you'd, as you'd like them to be to you. Now, if you will excuse me, I've got laundry to do. Take care.